When a new treatment is developed, its effect is often investigated in a randomized controlled trial. But except the effect and safety of the new treatment, it is of interest to investigate the cost effectiveness. The randomized controlled trial is not appropriate for a cost effectiveness analysis for two reasons. Firstly, the duration of randomized controlled trials are short since these studies are quite expensive. The duration is maybe only two years. In a cost effectiveness analysis, we want the study to continue until death, that is a lifetime time horizon. Secondly, the effect outcome in randomized controlled trials is what is called surrogate outcome, for example effect on blood pressure or blood lipid levels. Whereas in cost effectiveness analysis, we want to have the effect measured in quality. To come around these problems, simulation models with risk equations and extrapolations of data are used. The aim of simulation models is to reflect reality and try to predict what is going to happen in the future, like a weather forecast. Of course, reality is too complex to be modelled completely. However, models can incorporate the most important elements of reality and help to analyse different possible scenarios in a structured way. Therefore, it's true that all models are wrong, but some are useful. Now, let's take a look at the simulation model that will be used for the exercises in this course. The model has been developed only for educational purposes, but the principles are the same for this model as for real models used in cost-effectiveness analysis. Imagine a situation as the previous example. A patient group is being treated with a certain drug, here called the old drug. A new drug that is more effective but also more expensive is developed. The question we want to answer is whether the new drug is good value for money, despite its higher costs. In other terms, if it is cost-effective compared to the old drug and should replace it. To answer this question, we perform a cost-effectiveness analysis and to perform the cost-effectiveness analysis, we develop a simulation model for this patient group and these drugs. The model for this example has the technical term Markov model. That means that the model consists of finite states and that the simulated individuals during each cycle of the simulation, that is during each year, have to reside in one of the defined states. The model uses cohort simulation. That means that a cohort of identical individuals is simulated. There are other kinds of models that avoids the structure of finite states and that simulates heterogeneous cohorts and follows each individual specifically through the model. But Markov model with cohort simulation is often good enough for cost-effectiveness analysis and is the most commonly used model for this purpose. The model for this example consists of three health states named healthy, disease and dead. This means that in our model the individuals of the cohort are either feeling good in the state healthy or have developed the disease and moved to the state disease or have died and are found in the state dead. Hospitalization is called the transitional state since the individuals do not reside here a whole cycle, just a part of the cycle. During each cycle of this simulation, that is during each year, it is possible for the individuals to make transitions between the states. Individuals in the state healthy are each year subjected to risks to develop the disease and transit to the state disease or to die and transit to the state dead. Individuals in the state disease are subjected to risk of dying and to get hospitalized. Those who are hospitalized return to the state disease during the same cycle, since one cycle equals one year in this simulation, and since the duration of a hospitalization is modeled to be shorter than one year. Notice that there is no chance for the individuals in disease state to return to the healthy state. If in reality this would be possible, we should model a chance to transit back to the state healthy. But in this example, we assume that this is not the case. This is the model structure for the simulation model used in this source three states with possible transitions in between and one transitional state. Another way to graphically present the structure of a model is by a decision tree. The tree is read from left to right fulfilling one cycle. Then transitions are made and the simulation goes from left to right for another cycle and so on. Our model is quite simple with few health states and few transitions. Real models are often more complex. This is an example of a model that was used for a cost-effectiveness analysis for patients with renal failure. It is five states with possible transitions in between. It should be said, though, that a more complex model doesn't need to be a better model. For each error representing a possible transition, accurate data for the annual probability for this transition to occur have to be found. The more complex the model, the more detailed data have to be used. 
It could be better to use a simple and comprehensive model with high quality data than a highly complex model with low quality data. Normally, a simulation model is specific for the patient group and treatment under investigation, and therefore new models have to be developed for each cost-effectiveness analysis. There is no general model that can be used for all situations. The input data to our model consists of cost data, quality of life data, transition risk data, and data on treatment effects. The cost data consists of the cost of the treatment, in this case only the cost of the drug, but it could also be cost of administration, for example, cost of hospitalizations and productivity losses. The productivity losses appear when an individual is hospitalized or dies before age of retirement. The quality of life data are the utility for the health state healthy, the utility for the health state disease, as well as the utility decrement for the transitional state hospitalized. This decrement is subtracted from the utility of the state disease for those who are hospitalized. The transition risk data are annual probabilities for the transition from healthy to disease, that is the annual probability of developing the disease for individuals that are in the state healthy. Healthy to dead, the annual probability of death for individuals in the state healthy. Disease to dead, the annual probability to die for individuals that have developed the disease, and the annual probability of being hospitalized for individuals that have developed the disease. These annual probabilities are modeled to increase with age. For example, a 60-year-old individual with the disease has a higher risk of dying than a 50-year-old individual with the disease. The data on treatment effects consists of decreases of the transition risks for the new drug compared to the old drug. For example, regarding the risk of developing the disease, a hazard ratio of 0.90 is modelled for the new drug compared to the old drug. This means that whatever the risk is to develop the disease for individuals that are treated with the old drug, the risk is 10% lower for individuals that are treated with the new drug. So if the risk to develop the disease a certain year in the simulation is 20% for an individual on the old drug, the corresponding risk is only 18% for an individual on the new drug. With these decreases of the transition risks, the cohort being treated with the new drug will develop the disease, get hospitalized and die to a less extent than individuals that are being treated with the old drug. This will all result in greater health effects, that is more qualities, for individuals with the new drug. Now let's see what happens step by step in the simulation model. The model starts at start of treatment and goes on until death with annual increments of one year. The cycle length of the model is said to be one year. The whole cohort starts in the state healthy. The costs that appear during cycle 1, that is during the first year after start of treatment, are costs of the drug for each individual. Although the state is called healthy, it is assumed that these individuals have some kind of diagnosis and have started treatment. The effects are the total qualities, that is the utility for this health state multiplied by one year of life for each individual in the cohort. The total costs and effects from cycle 1 are registered. After that, the model leaps forward to one year, to cycle two. Now, some individuals of the cohort have developed a disease and have therefore moved to the state disease, and some have died. The costs and effects from the state healthy is as during cycle one, costs for the drug and total qualities. But during this cycle, they will be a bit smaller, since the number of individuals in this health state now has decreased. The costs of the state disease are the costs of the drug, hospitalization costs and productivity losses. The effects from this state are the qualities, the specific utility multiplied with one life year for each individual and utility decrement. For the state dead, there will be productivity losses, but no health effects at all. The total costs and effects for all health states during cycle 2 are summed up and registered. The model leaps a year forward again to cycle 3, and new transitions have occurred. Even more individuals have developed the disease, and some of those have died as well. Again, all costs and effects that occur in the different states are summed up and registered. This process continues cycle by cycle until all individuals of the cohort are in the state dead. Now nothing more will happen and the simulation can stop. Finally, the total costs and effects from all cycles are summed up to give the lifetime costs and effects. The simulation is completed. In a cost-effectiveness analysis, a simulation with a cohort that is treated with the old drug is first performed and lifetime costs and qualities are collected. Then the same thing is done, but this time the cohort is treated with a new drug instead. As an example, the model gives us the following results. 
Treatment with the old drug resulted in costs of $37,000 and 15.4 qualities per patient. Treatment with new drug resulted in costs of $66,400 and 16.7 qualities, both expressed as average per patient as well. We calculate the ISO, which is the difference in costs between the two drugs divided by the difference in qualities, which gives an ISO of $22,615 per quality.